Hi, I'm Soren Berger. In this clip, I'll take you through creating a sphere using my Soren Berger sphere caliper. In this demo, I'm going to be using a piece of U and I'll be mounting it in a chuck. It, of course, can also be mounted between centers. So now we just true up the cylinder. We need to check that the cylinder is parallel. Do that with the calipers. Looks like that end was a little small, so we'll take another cut at this end. The diameter now of the cylinder will, of course, be the diameter of the sphere. Now to define the right hand end of the um, sphere, we take the parting tool and make a 3 8 of an inch incision. Using the caliper set at the diameter, we mark off the length of the sphere. And using the parting tool again, making a 3 8 of an inch deep cut, we define that end. Cut away the waste so that we can have access to the, that side of the, the sphere with the calipers. Now with the beak of the caliper, we measure in from the two ends and mark with a black pencil. Now set a spring caliper to the distance between the two black lines. And now taking the parting tool and the spring calipers, we part into the diameter set on the caliper. We do this at both ends, creating tenons, which will give us the measurement that we want on the side. Now with a spindle gouge, we can cut away the waste and reveal that tenon. Be careful not to take any more material off. And we do the same on the other end, revealing the tin in there. We now mark the corner with a black pencil on the left and right hand end. Now with a gouge, we cut away the waste wood between the two black lines. This cut should be straight, black line to black line. So as this progresses, the more accurate the cuts are in the, at this stage, the more accurate your sphere will become. Now with the parting tool, we part off the little tenon that we created earlier. Now we, we do the same process on the other end. We cut away the waste wood between the two black lines. Again, I emphasize accuracy leads to a good sphere.
Now, taking the caliper, still set at the diameter of the sphere, we use the ears to mark a distance from the black line, either side of the black line. The red pencil will help define which marks we're working with as we progress. When we get to the other side, we can reset the caliper and use the longer legs. It will make it easier to make these marks. So now we take the gouge again and we are now turning away the black line and making a straight cut between the, the red lines. Accuracy again is essential. You should be cutting away about half of the red line. Do the same on the left hand side, cut away the black lines and go straight cut red to red. In the bottom corner here the black line you can see in the corner so it's, it's a little bit of a judgment when it's attached like this. The facets on our sphere should now all be the same size. You can check this with a caliper. Now taking the black pencil, we want to judge the center of each one of these facets and mark it on there. You can do that either by judgment or by measurement. You should now have alternating black and red lines, including a black spot on the end of the sphere. Taking the gouge, we are going to make the final cut, which is a curved one. And in doing it, we take away the red lines and we cut the curve from black line to black line. The best way to make this curve successfully is to start at the red line, take a small cut there, and then progressively come down to the black lines in that same curve. We do the same on the left hand side using that same technique. The black lines represent the surface of the sphere and these will be removed in sanding. You can now sand the sphere in your preferred way. I like to use a pipe end cap. It just ensures that the shape of the sphere is maintained. can part the sphere off and we can rechuck that in a vacuum chuck or a jam fit chuck. In this case I'm using one of my sphere collets which is very quick and easy.
So now we turn off the remaining tenon. And to finish the sphere with some sanding. 